Hello Kitty. We're going to talk about how to create music for your eyes using colored pencils. Now, before we get started with the coloring, I'd like to share a little story about how I developed a skill to use colored pencils to illustrate a 100 page comic book. I'm going to play a video, a keynote video, that I recorded earlier. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and create some color studies. Now before we get started with the demonstration, I'd like to share a little story about the path I took to acquire this skill set of using colored pencils and how to paint with it. Now in 2015, here's what I didn't know. I didn't know how to mix colors. I didn't know how to create my own custom color palette. I just didn't know where to start. Now, I know I studied visual communication at the University of the Philippines College of Fine Arts, and I'm pretty sure I dabbled with some paints during that time. And I'm pretty sure we took some color theory classes, but none of them really stuck with me. So I was still not well versed in using colors in my illustrations. And I also needed to figure out one other thing. I needed to find a way to motivate myself to start sketching again on a regular basis. Because for over a decade prior to this year, I had stopped sketching on a regular basis. And I knew I had to reincorporate that into my daily routine again in order to get better at this. So I gave myself this exercise to produce one sketch per day, one panel sketch on my A5 sketchbook. So one page is one panel. And to help myself get in the flow of things, I made use of photo references. And I made sure I picked photo references, photo references of things that looked interesting to draw, that had interesting shapes in them, and tonal values. And I also made it a point to collect mostly black and white photos because that would make it easier for me to translate the tonal values into a one color pencil sketch. And since I had a variety of um, photograph that I had collected, it was a good exercise for me to draw different shapes and different perspectives and subject matter which I couldn't have imagined on my own. Another thing that's good about using black and white photographs as photo references is it's a good teacher in showing how the interplay is between light and shadow. So this exercise was really effective to get me back into sketching on a regular basis. In fact, I couldn't wait to draw the next sketch the next day. Now, in 2016, I knew I had to look past this medium of pencils. I needed to uh, remove my focus from just sketching with pencils because when I think about color mixing, I think about painting because you can't really mix colors using a dry medium. So I, I thought about translating my pencil sketches into a water-based illustration. At first I just used one color and in this particular sketch I used a water-soluble graphite. So it still looks pretty much like a pencil sketch except you can see I can achieve a more gradual gradient and it's much easier for me to block in large shapes and uh, colored areas with just a few strokes of the brush. So I kept doing this and little by little I would add some more colors and in this particular sketch I actually used burnt umber and burnt sienna. Um, it looks very close in tint so 
it appears like I'm just using one color here, but I was taking things in baby steps. So in the next exercise, I thought about uh, translating a very simple set of sketches that I did um, depicting my the trip that I took that year. And this time I thought I would use a little bit more color and also play around with the gradients as well, paying attention to how the colors were behaving on my mixing palette as I was mixing them and as I was applying them on the paper and also paying attention to how they ended up looking once they dried up. So it was a fun little exercise, but it wasn't a good enough foundation to color mixing and color theory. So I decided to pick up a book and read more about watercolor. And there's a chapter in there talking about color theory and uh, creating your own wa watercolor palette. And I took some notes but most of it just flew over my head. So I decided to go back to doing more practical exercises. And so in my next trip, I created these sketches. And when I returned home, I translated a number of them into little paintings. But this time I applied the exercise that I read from the book to use two colors. and it was a, a neat exercise because it was easy enough it's, it wasn't daunting because it was just using two colors but it was forcing me to also uh, create a varied number of color mixtures s to be able to distinguish the different elements in my my composition like the cool colors in the far background and then the warmer colors in the middle ground and then the more intense or more highly pigmented colors in the foreground. So I applied this exercise to a few other sketches just to get more practice and get to know the medium some more. Now, I was thinking if I saw that painting on the left side before doing this exercise, I probably would have assumed that it was using more than two colors. But having done this exercise, I realized that with that color spectrum, it's actually possible to achieve just using two watercolor tubes. So when 2017 arrived, I had already practiced ab about two years of pencil sketches and some water-based illustrations. 